the heat shield. One of the most striking features of Flight 10, glowing bright orange and white. Also, it revealed an important truth. Starship's heat shield is not yet perfect. SpaceX has acknowledged the issues observed during re-entry and outlined solutions for the next flight. So what went wrong with Flight 10's heat shield, and how will SpaceX upgrade this critical system? Let's find out on today's episode of Great SpaceX. We all know that SpaceX achieved great success with Flight 10 by completing nearly every objective of the mission, including controlled re-entry and the landing sequence. It was the most complete demonstration of Starship to date, and it showed real progress toward the long-term goal of building a fully reusable system. However, the mission was not flawless. When examining the recovered ship, one issue became immediately obvious. Its protective armor, the heat shield, had changed drastically in color. This discoloration suggested that even the vehicle, though recovered largely intact, had not yet reached full reusability. Shortly after the flight, Musk explained that the cause was propellant leakage which led to the metallic tiles oxidizing. The oxidation spread to surrounding areas and created visible discoloration. Recently, Bill Gerstenmeier, SpaceX's vice president of build and flight reliability, provided more detail and clarity about the heat shield's performance. He first emphasized that SpaceX intentionally tested metallic tiles alongside ceramic tiles. The idea was to explore whether metallic tiles, which are more durable and easier to produce, could replace ceramics in the future. They were installed on both sides of the ship and possibly in the areas where white streaks were visible on images of S-37. A successful demonstration would have represented a major breakthrough. However, Gersten Meyer admitted that the material didn't work so well because it proved to be too vulnerable to oxidation. Beyond the oxidation issue, Gersten Meyer also pointed to another fundamental challenge. The heat shield is not yet perfectly sealed. Tiny gaps remain between tiles, gaps that are difficult to spot with without very close inspection. This is somewhat understandable given the complexity of the design. Starship requires more than 18,000 tiles, each hexagonal in shape, fitted onto a cylindrical body with pointed ends and complicated details such as flaps. Achieving a flawless fit for every tile across such a massive and detailed surface is extraordinarily difficult. Those small gaps are enough to allow extremely hot air reaching more than 1500 degrees Celsius during re-entry to penetrate the shield and affect the layers beneath. These openings also provided a path for oxidation to spread, which explained the discoloration. Gaps also exist between tiles and the underlying layer where SpaceX has tested techniques borrowed from the Dragon heat shield. In these cases, heat slipped through the gaps and damaged the lower layer, causing the white streaks that many noticed on the ship's surface. This means the earlier hypothesis that coolant was responsible for the streaks may have been incorrect. With the problems identified, attention now shifts to solutions. The most obvious fix is to eliminate the gaps by filling them. Many initially assumed this would involve adhesives, and indeed earlier images of S-38 showed SpaceX experiments with different types of glue to create tighter connections between the tiles. However, SpaceX appears to be pursuing a more advanced solution. The company is introducing a special wrapping paper material that can be placed around each tile before installation. Automated systems would then press the tiles firmly into place, with the wrapping paper filling both the spaces between tiles and the underlying layer. This approach has already been tested in certain areas of Ship 37, particularly around the nose cone. In those locations, white streaks were not observed, which strongly suggests that the material successfully prevented the penetration. The wrapping paper solution also has advantages over adhesives. Its compressive properties make it more effective at sealing microscopic spaces. And the installation process is simpler. Although this method will significantly increase preparation time, which involves wrapping thousands of tiles individually that will definitely demand substantial effort, it represents a practical step towards solving one of Starship's most critical challenges. SpaceX seems ready to expand this upgrade on S-38, which is currently in Mega Bay 2, awaiting its turn for testing. Flight 11, which will likely be the last mission using a Ship Version 2 vehicle, is expected to incorporate these changes. Gersten Meyer indicated that the launch will probably not occur this month, but instead take place early next month, giving engineers more time to implement and 
verify the upgrades. Although Flight 11 may not introduce many dramatic changes in mission objectives, it'll be an important opportunity to test refinements to the heat shield. Every improvement moves SpaceX closer to achieving true, full reusability, which is essential for Starship's role as a multi-planetary transport system. The road ahead remains challenging. Musk has described the heat shield as one of the two biggest remaining obstacles to make humanity multi-planetary, and he's not exaggerating. The upcoming flight will give us another glimpse of how SpaceX is working to overcome this hurdle. The journey is far from over, but it's an exciting one to follow. If you want to show your support for the SpaceX team, you can say keep upgrading. And if you have ideas of your own about the future of SpaceX and what they should do next, share them in the comments. And remember to like the video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already to stay updated on SpaceX's progress. The push for full reusability is underway and the heat shield is at the heart of that mission. Now, let us move on to a very notable Falcon 9 mission that is just around the corner. In the next few days, SpaceX will launch a highly important scientific payload for NASA known as the Interstellar Mapping and Acceleration Probe, or IMAP. The launch is currently scheduled for 7.32 a.m. Eastern on the 23rd of September from Launch Complex 39A at Cape Canaveral, Florida. This mission is not just about IMAP alone, though. The rocket's payload will include several other spacecraft, making it a rideshare effort that carries a broad range of scientific opportunities. Alongside IMAP will be the Space Weather Follow-On Mission, also called SWFO-L1, developed by the U.S. National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, as well as NASA's Carruthers Geocorona Observatory. Integral to this launch is IMAP itself, a spacecraft designed to open a new frontier in understanding the boundary of our solar system. IMAP will be the first dedicated mission to map the outer edge of the heliosphere, the immense bubble formed by solar wind that protects our solar system from interstellar radiation. To achieve this, IMAP is equipped with 10 advanced instruments built by U.S. institutions and in collaboration with 27 international partners. These instruments will measure solar wind particles, interstellar dust, and cosmic radiation while also providing continuous monitoring of solar activity. All of these spacecraft are headed toward the Earth-Sun Lagrange Point 1, also known as L1. This is a gravitationally stable point in space about 930,000 miles or 1.5 million kilometers away from Earth in the direction of the Sun. From this permanent position in sunlight, IMAP and its companions will have an unmatched view of solar activity. More importantly, they will be able to provide anywhere from 30 minutes to an hour of advanced warning about solar radiation storms. This is particularly vital because such storms pose a risk to astronauts traveling beyond the protective shield of Earth's magnetosphere. NASA has a clear reason for emphasizing this mission now. The Artemis program is preparing to send astronauts back to the moon, starting with Artemis 2, a crewed flight around the moon in 2026, and then Artemis 3, the first lunar landing mission since Apollo, planned for 2027. For these missions, the risk from space radiation is significantly higher, and the ability to forecast dangerous solar events could be the difference between safety and catastrophe. Nikki Fox, NASA's associate administrator for the Science Mission Directorate explained it clearly, stating that IMAP will provide warnings beginning with Artemis 2 and Artemis 3 that are faster and more accurate than ever before. IMAP will also deepen our scientific knowledge of the heliosphere. Principal investigator David McComas noted that IMAP's data will help scientists better understand how the heliosphere shields Earth and spacefarers from cosmic rays. This research has implications not only for future exploration, but also for our basic understanding of how solar systems evolve. Riding alongside IMAP, NOAA's SWFO-L1 spacecraft will play its own critical role. This satellite is dedicated to monitoring space weather in real time, tracking solar energetic particles, and feeding data directly into NOAA's forecasting models. This information is crucial for protecting satellites, communication systems, and power grids on Earth from geomagnetic storms. The third major payload, NASA's Carruthers Geocorona Observatory, will study Earth's exosphere, the thin outer layer of our atmosphere that extends nearly halfway to the moon. The mission, led by University of Illinois scientist Laura Waltrup, will help determine how hydrogen atoms escape Earth's gravity and how the exosphere responds to geomagnetic storms. Such findings will even inform models of planetary evolution in the search for habitable exoplanets. Together, these missions
missions form a powerful scientific trio. They will expand our knowledge of the sun's influence across the solar system and provide vital safeguards for both Earth and future human missions beyond low Earth orbit. For SpaceX, this is another demonstration of how the Falcon 9 has become a trusted workhorse for both commercial and governmental launches. Each mission that it carries not only advances technology, but also strengthens humanity's ability to reach further into space. The IMAP launch is therefore far more than just another Falcon 9 mission. It's a gateway to deeper scientific understanding, a shield for future explorers, and a cornerstone in preparing humanity for the next great steps beyond Earth. All eyes will be on SpaceX and NASA when the countdown begins on the 23rd. Let us wait and see how this milestone mission unfolds with Falcon 9's reliable support. Thus, SpaceX's role in supporting other organizations extends beyond NASA, with one of the most notable partnerships being its cooperation with Firefly Aerospace on lunar missions. Earlier this year, Firefly launched its Blue Ghost Lunar Lander aboard a Falcon 9, a mission widely praised as one of the most successful landings in recent years. The effort showcased Firefly's growing capabilities while highlighting SpaceX's critical role in enabling missions beyond Earth. Building on this success, the two companies are moving forward with new projects. Recently, Firefly revealed images of its next Next, Blue Ghost Lander on X, showing a nearly complete structure awaiting final systems. This lander will fly with an orbiter called Elytra Dark, or Elytra Dark, featuring a distinctive bell-like shape. Firefly wrote, Hashtag Blue Ghost Mission 2 heading to the far side of the moon is bigger and bolder, and we have the team to make it happen. Standing over 22 feet tall, the hardware has already passed initial fit checks with testing up next. The mission is scheduled to launch aboard a SpaceX Falcon 9 in 2026. Blue Ghost's design remains similar to the first, signaling Firefly's focus on refinement and reliability over rapid scaling. Together, SpaceX and Firefly are paving the way for sustainable lunar exploration, proving that industry partnerships are key to advancing humanity's return to the moon. In any case, folks, this has been Kevin with Great SpaceX. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe if you haven't already to stay up to date with yours truly on the latest milestones in SpaceX's journey. Thank you so much for watching, and always remember, curiosity, imagination, and inspiration will follow you so long as you keep looking up.